Well, that was the end of White Zombie. They just walked off a cliff. They just walked right off a cliff. As apparently zombies do. I mean, what are you going to do with those zombies? Anyway, welcome back to the Video Crypt. Once again, I'm Bitter Corella. This is the Cool Skeleton. And we are going to be showing you some tips and tricks and spells and charms that you can use at home in your daily life to make life a little bit easier. That's right. It's time for Hex for Trainables. Must be the season of the witch, yeah. Now, when you go about your daily life, there's, um, there's no telling when you or a loved one or just some stranger might be hit by a magical curse. It could happen anywhere at any time, so you should really be prepared. And this week, we're going to show you a few little magical first aid tricks to help you in case you ever have to help out a time of a magical curse. Now, these aren't going to make you a, you know, professional Benedante or um, Warlock or anything like that. These are just uh, a few simple things that you can use to help out in an emergency uh, so you might actually be able to help save a life from a magical curse. Uh, let's first off let's clear off our space here so that we can we can get ready uh, for this for this demonstration I am going to uh, have to I'm gonna have to rely on the help of my assistant and uh, helping out today is Junior who is a haunted ventriloquist dummy uh, now Junior is going to play the victim of our magical curse yeah, that's great, Junior. All right. <clears throat> so, let's say that you're walking down the street and you run across someone who appears to be under the influence of a magical curse. What do you do to help? Well, the first thing that you're going to have to do is you will always have to have with you your magical first aid kit. And what are you going to have inside your magical first aid kit? You're going to have three things. You're going to have fetishes, you're going to have amulets, and you're going to have talismans. I like to remember these using the helpful acronym FAT, FAT. So if you're having trouble remembering what you need in your magical first aid kit, always remember FAT is good. This is a very easy thing for me to remember because it's very relevant to my personal life. Now, <coughs> excuse me. So you're probably wondering, uh, what are the differences between these three things? What's a fetish? What's an amulet? What's a talisman? Okay, here's what we're talking about. Now, very often, if you're talking about a fetish, you're thinking of uh, some sort of item that has an inhabiting spirit. That's often the way people think of a fetish. Now. That's not entirely accurate. A fetish is basically any item that has a magical property to it. So it doesn't have to have to have an inhabiting spirit. It just has to do something magical. An amulet is a very specific magical item that has a repelling function. So an amulet is something that repels. It is something, for example, uh, it's a, a ward. If you're having, say, if you want to repel bad luck, you would use an amulet for that. You can see I've got a few amulets right here. Uh, now amulets, oh, actually that's my microphone. These are my amulets right here. Now amulets, um, are they can be very idiosyncratic depending on the person. Uh, for example, if you are a religious person, the, say a Christian, then the crucifix, uh, or rosary beads would be very powerful amulets for you. If uh, you're Jewish, then possibly the Star of David or the Seal of Solomon would be very powerful amulets for you. A person who does not have faith in those religions would not find those amulets helpful at all. Um, now, an amulet can also be something that's very idiosyncratic for you personally. If, for example, you were given a necklace by, say, your beloved grandmother, that necklace can become a very powerful amulet for you, but would be useless for anyone else who didn't have that emotional connection there. Um, 
So we'll talk in a few minutes about some general purpose amulets that can work for you regardless of personal beliefs or faith. Uh, now the final item that I mentioned was talismans. And a talisman is similar to an amulet, but it has an attractive function. So a talisman is something that attracts. If an amulet repels bad luck, a talisman attracts, say, good luck. Um, so basically that's what you got. You're, those are the things you're gonna have inside your magical medical first aid kit. Always travel with those. Now, let's, uh, let's look at our situation here. We are walking down the street. We run across a fella. He looks like he is in trouble. He looks like he may be suffering from a magical curse of some kind. What do you do? Well, first, you are going to go by uh, the piss rule. By which I mean, remember to protect yourself, identify the curse. Wait, let me start over. Wait, protect yourself, identify the curse, solve the issue, seek help piss. So that is the good way to remember what we're going to be doing. First thing you're going to do, you've got to protect yourself. You don't know what kind of bad juju this fellow here has on him and you don't want it to bounce back and hit you when uh, you're trying to help. So the very first thing you've always got to do is make sure that you yourself are protected. Now, how are you going to protect yourself? Here's a few things that y'all uh, you will probably need. Now, like I said, we're talking about uh, we are going to be talking about some amulets, and uh, one very protective amulet that always works, the Hamza. Now, uh, the Hamza is very popular these days as an art object here in the States, so they're not hard to find. You've probably seen them in a lot of uh, hippy-dippy stores. They usually just kind of look like a hand like this. Now, this is a powerful award throughout the Middle East. Uh, my mother-in-law likes to say that it's the one thing that uh, Jews and Muslims can both agree on because it is uh, very prevalent in both cultures. It's very often called the Hand of Miriam in Judaism and the Hand of Fatima in Islam. But either way, it's, uh, it works, and it works regardless of your faith, which is great. Um, here in America, you know, it also works not just because of not just because of its background and history here, but also because of its, its form. It looks like a hand saying, stop, go away, get lost. Um, and under the principles of sympathetic magic, where like affects like, that can be a very powerful form for a word to have. Uh, now, so the Hamza, uh, it was originally designed against the evil eye, but it's become a general use amulet. So no matter what curse you're dealing with, it's very, uh, very protective, very good to have that one. Um, now, I'll also mention there's another amulet uh, that very often is associated with a Hamza. Uh, our Hamza here does not have it, but when you find most Hamzas, you'll notice that it's very common to have an eye right here in the palm of the hand. Now that eye is a second amulet called, I've got one right here on my, uh, on my uh, wristband there. Uh, we'll also put it on the board behind me so you can get a better look. That's the Nazar. Uh, also, it's another ward against the evil eye, but again, it's become kind of a general use ward against any sort of curse. Uh, now, you'll probably want to get a Hamza that also has an Azar in it for double protection, so that's a good thing to have on you if you're, if you're worried about any sort of curse bouncing back to hit you. Uh, another thing, okay, I, I know what you're thinking. You're probably thinking like, you ladies out there are probably thinking like, those are great, but I wish there was an amulet specifically formulated for me, for my needs as a lady. Uh, and luckily there is, uh, because there is actually, very powerful for the ladies is the, um, the cowrie shell 
uh, necklace. Now, the cowry is um, sacred to the ocean goddess, uh, and it's a very, it's uh, apparently, again, uh, people looked at cowry shells and thought they looked like uh, vaginas, so it's very associated with the divine feminine. So, this is an especially powerful ward for people of the lady persuasion. And I know there are going to be some dudes out there who are watching this and immediately get mad. Immediately say, hey, that is uh, sexist that guys can't use this amulet. I'm going to go and complain to all my buddies on Wizard Chan about this. And to you guys, I say, there's, there's no proof that this uh, amulet wouldn't work for dudes. So go ahead. Wear it as well. I don't care. Do whatever you want. <coughs> anyway, we have now got all our, uh, we've got our wards, we've got our amulets. We are in good shape to, um, to start dealing with our guy. We're protected. So let's move on to the second element of piss, the I, which is identify the problem. Let's find out what our guy is dealing with here. So first, hey, hey buddy, how you doing here? How, how you feeling? What's 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 uh what's going on? Oh, oh! I just I'm just feeling terrible right now. I'm I'm filled with despair and ennui. Oh, uh, the life just seems to be getting me down and nothing going my way. Oh, whoa, whoa! Oh, ah. okay. So. Our buddy Junior here, he sounds like he is suffering from some sort of magical curse. His description sounds pretty uh, cursed to me, but how do we know? That could be a lot of just regular medical issues as well, right? And we don't want to waste our time trying to help someone um, with a non-magical problem with magical solutions. It's just, it's, it's stupid. It's a Let's, let's make sure that there's actually magic at work here. Now to do this, you are going to need your special magical curse diagnostic tool, by which I mean your hagstone. Ah, there we are. So this right here, this is a hagstone right here. And it's also called an adder stone. And basically what it is, it is a stone with a naturally occurring hole in it. Now, it does not work if you bore the hole yourself. It has to be naturally occurring. You mostly find these on beaches, and the power of the hagstone that is if you look through that hole, all magic will be revealed to you. You will be able to identify curses, witchcraft, the work of the fae, and the fairy court. So, very useful thing to have. Let's take a look through our hagstone and confirm whether our man here is dealing with a magical curse. Hmm, hmm. Uh, can you say all for me there, buddy? All right, let's look in those eyes. All right, uh, hmm. Okay. Yeah. Okay, I see some definite magical curse work here. Now, the Hagstone it will tell us that there is magic involved, but unfortunately, it uh, it's not powerful enough to tell us exactly what's at play here. Now, generally, when uh, you are dealing with a magical curse in the field, you are um, generally there's three different things you might be dealing with: uh, possession, elf shot, or the evil eye. P. So basically, remember that if you've got P, you need to piss. Helpful acronyms. Um, now, generally, if you see something beyond that, I would say uh, don't get involved. You don't have the tools to really help with that. So immediately seek out professional help. Call uh, your local Benedante or Warlock who really knows what they're doing. But for these three minor things, which will probably comp Com uh, compromise, or sorry, uh, will probably comprise about 90% of the uh, curse work you see in the wild. This is pretty useful stuff. So, let's start with our first one, possession. 
I know what you're thinking. You're thinking of like, you know, uh, full-blown demonic possession. That's something you're not going to see very often. And if you do, uh, immediately step back. This is way beyond anything that we're training you to deal with today. You need to get like a priest or a rabbi or something like that. You need, you need to get yourself like a professional. You'll know if it's full-blown demonic possession because they'll have the usual symptoms, by which I mean uh, speaking in tongues, knowing where treasure is buried that they should not know about. Uh, the, they'll usually tell you themselves that they are demonically possessed. Uh, with a whole, usually they'll, they'll be very talkative, in fact. Um, and of course, the head spinning around, crab walk thing, there's all that too. But the kind of possession we're talking about is by minor spirits, and it's generally pretty much uh, comparable to having a bad cold or flu. Uh, you'll know if you've got one of these because you usually get them from hanging around in liminal spaces. So, hey, pal, um, have you been hanging out in any uh, graveyards or crossroads or, you know, caves in the wilderness? Oh, you know, no, 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 no. Okay, so. Here's what you do if you encounter this issue. Luckily, it's pretty easy to get rid of. Um, you are going to use the Abracadabra talisman. And uh, this is one that's not very popular, so you don't see it a whole lot. You might have to make your own, uh, but it basically looks like this. It is an amulet. I'm sorry, it is, it is a talisman that has, as you can see, the word abracadabra written on it, and then slowly disappearing as it goes down. Uh, that symbolizes how the spirit causing the illness is also slowly disappearing, just as the word is. Uh, so you'll have one of those, put it on your, uh, on your victim here, it'll help uh, alleviate any sort of uh, possession-based illness. Now the next issue we're talking about is elf shot, and that is when you get shot by tiny invisible arrows by invisible elf archers. Uh, you'll know it because it generally involves sudden stinging pain, um, usually in the joints, so uh, it can basically look like arthritis or uh, rheumatism or just sciatica, um, but it's very sudden uh, pains, uh, stinging, uh, stinging, burning, uh, stabbing pains is what you're looking for with elf shot. Now, luckily, this is one that is also pretty easy to deal with. What you need to do is just get yourself a poultice. Get yourself a poultice made out of uh, nettles, whey bread, and fever few, and you apply that to the uh, affected joint. So you would just put it right on there like that. Very simple, very simple solution. The final uh, magical curse we're going to talk about is actually the most common, and that is the evil eye. Now, what is the evil eye? The evil eye is basically uh, something that, well, let's say things are going good for you. Life is sweet. Everything is going your way. Everything is turning up millhouse. You're the cock of the walk and nothing can bring you down. Um, you're going around telling everyone just how great everything is for you. Bad idea. The more you talk about how great things are for you, the more likely it is that someone is going to get jealous. And when someone gets jealous of you, they may look at you like this. And by doing that, cursed upon cast, <coughs> cast upon you the curse known as the evil eye. Now, the evil eye is sometimes done intentionally if someone's really pissed at you, and sometimes just by being jealous it can be cast on you. I mean, unintentionally, not by any malice on the person of the cast, on the part of the caster. Now, the symptoms of the evil eye involve a streak of bad luck, ennui, depression, uh, just a gloomy feeling in general. Uh, in fact, that very much sounds like the issues that our friend Junior here is complaining of. So it sounds like, Junior, you've got the evil eye. 
So, how do we cure the evil eye? Well, Junior, you really should have been wearing your Hamza and your Nazar. But unfortunately, it looks like you weren't, so we are going to have to deal with this in our own way. We're going to have to deal with this now. Um, and the way to deal with the evil eye, there are a couple ways to do with it. One general use talisman for this is the Scarab, if you can see that right there. Scarab has a general healing uh, power against all curses, so you can always just put that right on the forehead of the affected uh, victim, and that will be very helpful. Now, specifically for the evil eye, there's uh, another couple uh, cures that I want to mention. Um, if you know who cast the spell, and you know it was done unintentionally. All you have to do is get the all you have to do is get the caster to touch the victim, and the curse will be lifted. Now, if it was an intentional evil eye cast, they may be less likely to help you out with that. And if you don't know who cast it, well, that won't help at all. So there's another uh, very helpful way to get rid of the evil eye, and it is a gesture called, where I'm from, the Maloink. And it basically looks like this. Uh, you've probably seen this at most rock concerts. Uh, it goes by a lot of different names, but as I said, where I come from, we call it the Maloink. And all you gotta do is, doop, 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 doop. Boom, that's all you gotta do. Just touch your person with the Maloink, evil eye is gone. Let's take a look here. Junior, how do you feel now that you've been, uh, now that we've treated you? Oh, I feel great. I feel so much better. The weight of the world is off my shoulders. I feel like I've uh, turned over a brand new leaf and everything is gonna be okay. Oh, hold on there, Junior. I, I know you're feeling pretty good about things right now, but remember, that last S in our PISS acronym. Seek help. I'm not a professional. Uh, so Junior, I need you, now that you're mobile again, you're doing okay, I need you to seek out your local uh, warlock or Benedante or whatever sort of spiritual, magical professional you may have in the area to really get a full clean bill of health. Absolutely, I'm totally gonna do that. Ah, oh, well great. Um, so thanks for joining us uh, this week on Deep Cuts to learn a little bit of magical first aid. Hopefully this is something you can use in your own life. So if you ever run across someone who's been the victim of a magical curse, you can help out just a little bit. Um, remember our acronym, PISS, protect yourself, identify the curse, solve the problem, seek help. It can help save a life. That's all the time we have us that's all the time we have with us this week on Deep Cuts, but join us next time for more Deep Cuts. Who's